Hi everybody and welcome to week 11 of our Mighty Small Summer. This week we will be discussing Ephesians and what it means to live a life worthy of that which we have been called to. Let us pray. Oh God, give us grace to set a good example to all among whom we live to be just and true in all our dealings, to be strict and conscientious in the discharge of every day, pure and temperate in all enjoyment, gracious and generous and courteous toward all, so that the mind of Jesus Christ may be formed in us and all may know that we are his disciples, in whose name we pray. Amen. So it is a stormy rainy day here at the lake um it started thundering around 6 30 and the powers flicked a few times so before anything else happens before the power goes out um let's dive into ephesians um two things to note that are not discussed in this reflection um, but that I think you should know. The first is that Ephesians was not written by Paul. And the second is that the passages in Ephesians specifically about wives and their relationship to their husbands. And the passages about the relationship between slaves and their masters have been used to oppress people for centuries. And in some traditions, they still are. So think about that as you read. Initially for this week, I was going to talk about the strict upbringing that I had in the church um, and all the rules that were placed on us so that we could, in theory, live a life worthy of the calling. But as I sat down to writing that, I realized that I didn't need to do that and that instead a much better option would be to talk about my next door neighbor um, who in many ways was the grandmother in my life growing up. She never, 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 never locked their front door. Um, she always said that if someone needed to steal from their house, they were very desperate and that they needed whatever they took. They didn't have much, but what she had, she shared with everyone. <clears throat> she loved bingo, church bazaars, dancing, NCIS, cheese dogs, and her family. She faithfully attended mass at the church a few blocks away from where they lived. She was the first person you wanted when you needed someone to pray for you. She'd practically be at the church lighting candles for you as soon as she hung up the phone. I don't ever remember her talking about her faith. Um, she let her actions speak for her. She was constantly being generous to those who needed her to be. She was always buying groceries for people with no questions asked. She wasn't the world's greatest cook, but if you had even the slightest case of the sniffles, she'd managed to get chicken noodle soup to you. I still think that soup was magic. She knew what her call was and she lived it faithfully without fuss and without pretension. And I think if there were more people in the world like her, the world would be a far better place. Grandma loved everyone, welcomed everyone, took the little money she had and spent it on others, lived faithfully and lived authentically. I think that living authentically is the most best honest way to lead a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called, to live our life so 
fully and wonderfully that if we ever have to give an account of our actions, we can do so without guilt and without shame. Beloved children, let us live in love, living lives worthy of our calling, loving as Christ loves us. Amen.